Superstars. So this is the third episode or the third installment to our three life-changing suppling exercises. Now this the reason why I'm so excited about this episode is because this episode helps you if you've just got your horse back from the breaker. If you've got a Grand Prix horse that you can't make the, the half pass line, if you've got an advanced horse that you can't get clean changes on, this episode helps every single one of you. And I can't wait to show you what it's about. I'm gonna bring a couple of my analogies in that you've talked we've talked about before. There'll be a bit a little bit around leg yield, and I'll show you about that. And always. The banana. <laughs> so I have got it here, the banana, because I'm going to use this to actually show you how this leg yield exercise can actually really work all the way through the training sale, all the way through all of your suppling exercises. So let's get into it. So guys, so for today, what we're gonna do is do a small crash course on leg yield, just a little bit of a reminder, but don't forget we've got three episodes on leg yield already been published, so I'm gonna put them as cards there so that if you wanna click on them and look, you'll be able to, okay? Then we're gonna show you how to use leg yield on a circle, and then I'm gonna show you how to make leg yield, make, use leg yield to make your horse more upright, okay? So, if you're a really advanced rider and you know all of these other basics, you need to skip through to the time point that Jeremiah is gonna put up on the screen now. This is the timestamp. Come to this timestamp, and this is gonna show you how to use leg yield for a really advanced horse, okay? So we've got three sections we're gonna look at today. The basic leg yield, the leg yield on basic lines and then the leg yield for advanced movements okay so let's get into it okay guys so leg yield okay so again we've got three episodes on it and the three episodes one two three I'm gonna list them here so that you can go back to them and watch okay but what do we have to keep in mind firstly can we have all four feet on the train tracks, okay? So your hind legs are in line with your front legs. That's very important. And the goal eventually is that you can ask your horse to step sideways like this without these legs falling out or going forward. That you've got control of those hind legs that I'm on a straight line here. And when I go sideways, that straight line somewhat remains, okay? But again, we've got those videos to look at about that. Have a look at the banana. Again, we know that a leg yield is straight. Yeah, and we're going parallel to the wall. But if we gymnasticize a leg yield, we can ask them to bend a little bit more. So for the idea so that you understand exactly what we're trying to achieve in a leg yield in a training scenario versus a test scenario, you're trying to make the inside of the body small, okay? So if that was your horse, that would be a leg yield, okay? He's going this way, okay? So where do I sit when I'm doing the leg yield? I sit on the inside of the manana, the smallest part of the rib cage. So when you're doing your leg yield with the banana, okay, you're gonna sit on the small side of the rib cage. So if I'm going to the left, the rib cage is being gonna be bigger, okay, this way. So I'm gonna put my weight a little bit here, okay? Remember it's not this, it's just thinking I'm gonna sit on that small part, okay? If I'm riding my horse, I don't wanna sit over here, I wanna sit in the middle, okay? But to sit in the middle, I need to think a little bit onto that small banana, okay? You're gonna see it on G now, but again, if you're not 100% on leg yield, pop back to the banana video and the three leg yield videos. Okay, let's have a look at on G. Okay guys, so leg yield. And you have to excuse G today, he's a little bit hot. He's a bit frightened today of all the stuff that's going on. Start on the centre line. Straight line, leg yield over, trying to keep the horse as straight as possible. The point is not that you reach the wall. So if that's all you get, doesn't matter, okay? The point is that you actually keep him parallel with the wall. Think about your banana shape, look ahead of you. Sending him over by sitting a little bit of weight away from the wall. Feeling the rhythm. Step by step on your diagonal line. 
Those of you who constantly ask me about spooking, here you see he's spooking, but I'm able to keep him going because he's connected. Straight, leg yield. How do I make that more complicated? Okay, I start it from the wall. Good boy. Good boy. So to make that more complicated now, I can go from the wall into off the wall leg yield. And then it's using less of the physics, I suppose, and more of his willingness to do what he's got to do. Again, he's spooking here, so I turn his head away from what he's looking at and keep riding. Good boy. Again, off the wall. And that makes it more clear on the aid. I keep him as parallel as I can. I can bend him one way, that's okay. But the body needs to stay the same. Good boy. So that's leg yield, guys. Very simple. Watch the leg yield video if you need more. But ultimately, it's just using leg yield on various angles. Using leg yield from the center line to the wall to begin with, because that's easy. Physics helps you. The horse wants to go to the wall. All you really need to do is make sure he's straight, parallel. Yeah? Next step is taking him off the wall. It's a little bit counterintuitive. You're going one way, you're saying counterflex, come away from it. He thinks, oh, that doesn't really make sense. So he says a bit, no, that's normal, okay? Next thing after that is doing it on curved lines, okay? Which is the circle one that you saw here. Last thing I wanna show you guys is how you could combine leg yield with other movements. Right guys, so now that we understand what a leg yield is, we understand how to do it, we understand how to move the horse's shoulders and what the premise of it is. Now we can open that up a bit. Now we can go, right, how can we make the leg yield make them even stronger, even better, okay? So I'm gonna get Toby to have a look down here at the ground. This is our horse, okay? So this is our horse riding a circle around the arena, okay? And when I film this on my horse next, you actually get to see it. We're actually standing up on the, up on the top so you can see this vision on a horse, okay? So, this is my horse shaped around the circle, okay? Now, if I want him to start to gymnasticize his body even more, we can do what you call a leg yield on a circle, okay? So the inside of his bend is here, the inside of the banana is right here, okay? What we wanna do is keep the shoulder up here on the imaginary circle line and with our inside leg and by sitting to the inside to give him space to work, go to the outside, we push his quarters out a little bit, okay? So he ends up going around the circle a little bit like this, okay? So the, the out, the, this outside hind leg is almost sweeping around. So it's a leg yield, except you don't let the shoulder move. The shoulder stays on the line, okay? And so you can imagine how gymnastic that makes him. It makes his hind legs cross, okay? It makes his inside of his rib cage get even smaller, but it also encourages him to take a bigger step. To be able to twist like that as he's going around a circle, he needs to take a bigger step, otherwise he can't get there. Okay, so it's a phenomenal, oh hi Jeff. It's a phenomenal way to supple your horse, okay? And then you can go from leg yield, working pirouette. Leg yield, working pirouette. Leg yield, working pirouette. Leg yield, working pirouette. Leg yield, working pirouette, okay? So then guys, you see me in the video here, I'm doing that. I'm just going leg yield, working pirouette. Leg yield, working pirouette. Leg yield, working pirouette. So ultimately, the shoulder is pinned to the circle line and all you're doing is moving the quarters, okay? It gives you this phenomenal control. So now, watch me do it on G. Hope you enjoy it. All right guys, so, We've learned how to do leg yield. Now let's show where you can use leg yield in higher level horses and higher level movements. So first thing, circle gives you a natural bend anyway, okay? Imagine then 
if you add a leg yield. So here, I keep the shoulders on the line. I sit in my banana and I push his quarters outside his shoulders. And you can see his hind legs crossing. You can see that his hind legs cross. So you can understand how much more, good boy, that would make for him. Then when you go on the straight line, he really takes the contact. So again, I leg yield out, push the quarters outside the shoulders on a circle line. And he finds that hard, he tilts his head. I fiddle with him until he gets good. And then, no message. And look at how much he stretched. Did you see that? Comes up and sucks up a bit again. Leg yield out. On the circle, so the hind legs cross. And then, out. He takes the contact. Really cool exercise. Do that in canter. Push his quarters out. You see, his canter collects more because he's sitting more on his outside hind. Take that another level, make that a working pirouette. Then make that a leg yield again. Then make that a working pirouette again. Make that a leg yield again. So you're just constantly moving the rib cage behind the shoulders. How cool is that? And you can see, good boy, for a school horse like that, he's struggling. He finds that not so easy, but that's okay. That's okay for him to find it a little bit tricky because that's the point. When we go to gym, we don't go, ah, 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 coffee. <laughs> Some of us might, but I guarantee you may not have a bikini body. <laughs> if you want to challenge your horses, you need to be fair, but you need to go to a moment where they find it a little bit tricky, okay? And it's understanding about where's tricky and where's finding the balance well, okay? So there you can see, the 10 meter circle taught you how to control the shoulders. The leg yield taught you how to control the shoulders but also getting more engaged. Combine those two things together, what do you have? This amazing culmination of I have my horse amazing and collect it and can start pirouettes, etc., etc. All right guys, so now this, this is the exciting bit. This is what makes me just get, oh, I can't describe how exciting it makes me. It's, uh, it's so exciting. Anyway, let's get into it. So. I'm gonna show you now how you can use leg yield to make your horse more upright, okay? So once they're more supple, then you can actually get them to be more upright, which means more weight, even weight on all four legs, less leaning from one side or the other, making your, even your leg yields more upright, your half passes more upright, your changes with bigger jumps. Okay, so I'm going to go through the theory of it a little bit and then again I'll show you a little bit with G. Okay, so I'm going to do a half pass, so watch me, wait a second, here I go. So, you're in a test, okay? Wait, I should preface this, you're not going to do this in the test, this is what the test people are going to say to you, okay? Come around the corner, and you do your half pass, okay? And as you do your half pass, your horse actually starts to tilt like this, okay? When they tilt like this, you can imagine all four feet don't have the same amount of weight in them, do they? This leg here is gonna have less, okay? This leg here is gonna have the most, this one here is gonna have less, okay? So they're doing a half pass, but actually they're kinda like this as they're going along, okay? So the things that you might get your judge saying is make it more upright, make it more parallel, quarters trailing, quarters leading. All of those things are because he's not upright, okay? So how do you solve it at home with training with your leg yield, okay? Let's watch it again. So I come out of the corner, I come into half pass, my horse goes like this, okay? I'm doing a half pass, but I just feel like he's collapsed. He's collapsing through his rib cage here. So while I'm on this diagonal line, I simply go, no, 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 mate. Leg yield. As I leg yield sideways, it picks his body up, okay? Once I feel his body comes up, I change my line back to half pass, okay? As soon as he starts to do this again, I change my line back to leg yield again. 
Then I go half pass again. And then I go leg yield again. So as soon as he starts to do this, rather than needing to prop him up or pick him up, yeah, we use the leg yield to get his body to stand on all four feet. Once he's on all four feet again, we go back to the half pass, but the moment we feel that he starts to do this again, we go back to the leg yield. So we're changing his center of balance versus just needing to pin him, okay? Look at it with a half pass, with the actual banana. This on a diagonal line is half pass, okay? What's leg yield? That on a horizontal line. What's half pass? That on a diagonal line. What's leg yield? That on a horizontal line. So your horse's body the entire time doesn't change. Your horse's body stays exactly the same the entire time. I'm doing a half pass, diagonal line. Now I'm doing a leg yield, horizontal line. I'm doing a half pass, diagonal line. I'm doing a leg yield, horizontal line. I'm doing a half pass, diagonal line. I'm doing a leg yield, horizontal line. Horse's body doesn't change. So you're not propping his shoulder up. You're not having him wiggle around like this. His body stays the same. All you're doing is getting his center of balance better. Yeah. So let's do a Grand Prix half pass. Okay. Watch me. Right. So when we do a Grand Prix half pass, okay, the reason why most horses can't make it is because they can't make the line. So Toby, if you pan over to E and just show them where E is, that's the line, okay? So it's from M to E. That would, be a, that would be a Grand Prix line, okay? So you bring it around to me again. What we do in our brain is we think, I must make E, okay? So we start to push the horse to E. The horse starts to do this. This leg comes off. The big fancy trot goes away. Everything goes away. And by the time they get to E, they're basically doing a diagonal line, yeah? Because by the time they make it 20 meters across that arena or further across the arena, not on all four feet, there's no way they can make the line. But we've got in our head, I've got to push and push and push and push them. So we want a nice easy line, guys. So if you're training an easy line, you're going to start, <laughs> you're going to try not to drop your banana. You're going to start from the center line down to V and you're going to go half pass, leg yield, half pass, Leg yield, half pass, leg yield. I feel like I'm doing a grapevine, yeah, back in the 80s. But you see, it's just understanding what leg yield does. Leg yield props the shoulder up. You're doing tempi changes. Chung, I change onto this leg, okay? but he's all on that front, inside front. He's just sitting at his weight here. So I can't get him oh, to do the next change because I just can't get him to get on the leading outside hind to go over enough. So, tempi changes. I'll do it straight so you can see. Change, okay? Now I want him to change this way. So I've got to get him onto the new outside hind, okay? Which is going to be this one. So I go change. Change the bend, but keep the counter canter. Leg yield, change. Change the count, change the bend, keep the counter canter. Leg yield puts him on the new hind leg. Change. Change the bend. New hind leg gets the new weight. Change. Oh my God. Brilliance. Imagine you're in a test for those of you who do this. You're on your last change, you're on number six, and you know that he's getting more and more and more on that forehand. Little mini leg yields in between the strides. Gets him on the right hind leg, boom. Or the correct hind leg, boom. Okay? This banana, this understanding how leg yield works, this is the key to everything. This gets them all four feet on the ground, okay? We're gonna pop over now to have a look at G. And again, we're using the half pass leg yield in this video. I would have liked to show you more, but he was pretty knackered by the end of this. <laughs> but at least you can see that there too, okay? This is the key to success, guys. This is just taking it that whole new level. I hope you enjoy it. Let's have a look at how you can use leg yield to help your higher level movements. So let's make a half pass more upright. So half pass, 
Good boy, G. Leg heel back. Woo! And you think you see him hesitate and go, what? Half fast. Leg heel back. Woo! It's like okay, he's spooking a little bit at my, um, my filmer there. And then we'll do the same thing coming away from you. So, half pass. Make it a bit further over so you can see the angle. And then, leg heel back. And it's about finding that balance. Good boy. He's spooking again there. Good boy. And again, I show you guys what I do in that spook. That's why I didn't edit it out. Half pass. Leg heel back. Half pass. Make it a traverse circle. Half pass again. So you see the shape doesn't change. Here he wants to spook. So I just, good boy, keep asking him to go into the bridle so that he can't. Again, whoop, there he wanted to fall, so I leg yielded to fix it. Half pass. And leg yield back, good boy. So I have to stop there, guys, because you can see my poor Gigi. He's a little bit sweaty. He hasn't had a big ride. But what that shows you is that you can use all of these suppling exercises early on to make your way through the levels. A leg yield that you learn at basic points early in your life, roll through to all of your lateral movements later in your life, okay? So take this on board, use these exercises, and it doesn't matter if you're a Grand Prix rider or someone just learning leg yield, this is gonna help you so much. Serpentines, 10 meter circles, leg yield, and then using leg yield within higher level movements. This moment again, in the corner over there, I went to half pass, he fell. I didn't put more pressure on him and say, don't fall. All I did, picked up his shoulder by leg yielding him and then went again. And you saw how quick I was able to solve that and without force, I don't have a whip in my hand because he was able to understand and move with me. Okay, when he spooked at Ash, because she's standing right in the arena with her big camera stuff. Again, he was able to keep going. When he spooked over here, you can see him spook, but it doesn't, I don't lose the pot completely. I don't stop, he doesn't become a giraffe, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, okay? So these are all the things you have to understand. This is proper warts and all. It's warts and all that you see, the whole point is just to play with this suppleness. I hope you enjoyed this, guys. I hope that this really opened your eyes a little bit and was a bit more real than normal as well, because what I'm really trying to do for you is make it more real. If you're liking this channel, if you're enjoying all of this, please, please, please subscribe. The subscriptions are something we really need. So if you've watched this video and you liked it, please subscribe to us because it really helps us grow our channel and be able to give you guys more and more. I can't wait to talk to you next time, guys. Bye. Mwah!